Here's a video about calculating limits and infinity for uh, certain simple functions, namely polynomials and rational functions. Here's an example to start out with. The limit as x goes to infinity of this big rational function. Um, the intuition here, which we talked about in class, is that when x is large, oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, when x is large, there we go, only the leading terms matter. We put in some big x's into here, and we discovered that when x is really big, despite the fact that this is a much bigger coefficient than this one, it's the 5x cubed that's going to dominate. And here it's going to be the 15x cubed that's going to dominate. And they're going to dominate more and more and more as x gets bigger, so it's as if this stuff isn't even here. And so that leads to the quick method, which is the cover-up. A student once called, one mine once called this the Roswell method. Uh, after the Roswell incident with the aliens and all. Anyway, it's the cover-up method. And we just cover up, ignore all the non-leading terms. And then what do you do? Well, then you just have a new limit. So let's see. We just take this guy, copy it down here, and I'm just going to erase these guys as if they weren't even here. Because in the limit, they really are going to go away. I'm going to give you a more careful justification of that in a minute. The reason that that's such, such a good thing is now we can do some algebra. Remember, algebra before calculus is a great motto. And here, we couldn't have canceled anything. But here, those x cubes cancel. And so I'm just going to copy it one more time and just kill the x cubes. Hey, look. That's something that we know how to take the limit of. It's a constant. It's just 5 over 15 or 1 third. OK. And so even quicker method is, uh, or sort of the, sh the uh, punch line, is that here, we got the ratio of the leading terms. That's usually a good enough punchline, but we have to. There are some cases where that's a little tricky. So what I always emphasize is just do the cover up and then just take the limit. It's going to be really easy because it's just going to be uh, some number times the power of x over some number times the power of x. So for example, suppose we take this guy and modify it a little bit. What if this guy were just an x squared? Okay. That's still the leading term. The 15x cubed is still the leading term. And so the claim is that that's the same thing as if these non-leading terms weren't here. And again, I'll justify this more carefully in a minute, in case purists are screaming about this. And OK, now still some cancellation. But what do we get? We get something a little different. Uh, we get 5 over 15x. The x's don't all cancel. OK. So what happens? Well, here, when x gets really, really big, I've got it in the denominator. I've got a constant, one third, basically. And then I'm dividing by a huge number. That limit's going to be 0, OK? Because, so I'm going to just summarize that, the one crucial building block limit that we have to believe, and it's a really basic one, is that the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x is 0. 1 over a huge number is a tiny number. That's all it is. And in fact, that's true even if you take negative huge numbers. They're going to still go to 0 just from the other side. OK. So that's our big building block. And that's only the, the only limit we really have to know. Oh, except for, um, I guess I could say, let's see. The other one, well, actually, I'll, I'll, I'll do one more example, and we'll see why we need one more building block. So let's do yet another example where let's change this to the fourth power. OK. Once again, our intuition says that these guys should be much bigger than these guys when x is really big. These guys tend to start to dominate. Um, and that intuition is reinforced if you do some stick in some explicit numbers, these huge numbers for x, and see how it works, which we did. And so that's just going to be 5x to the fourth, and on the bottom, 15x cubed. OK. Now, we do get some cancellation, but again, it doesn't all cancel. The x's don't all cancel. And what happens now is x is on the top. Aha. So now what happens? This is even easier. When x is getting big, what is x doing? Or what is x over 3 doing? This is really just x over 3, after all, if we simplify it a little bit. And if x is getting really, really huge, then x over 3 is getting really, really huge. Slightly slower, but it's still going to infinity. And so this is going to be infinity. So this is the tricky one, though. Okay. Because, let's do one more example, a very slight modification of this. I'm going to copy the whole thing, because I'm going to look at the limit as x goes to minus infinity now. 
So this is going to minus infinity, minus infinity, minus infinity. And now, OK, if x is a really huge negative number, x over 3, oh yeah, that's also a really huge negative number. OK. So that's, it actually does matter which direction you take it in. Here, it didn't matter. It was just 0. Let's see what it, if it mattered up here. In this first example, suppose this were minus infinity. So this is minus infinity. So this is, oh wait, the x's went away completely. It doesn't matter. So for many examples where, they're the e where they're, these powers are equal and they cancel, it doesn't matter plus or minus infinity. If this power on the bottom is bigger, then it doesn't matter because they're both going to 0. Okay, so this also would have gone to 0 if this was minus. The only time it does matter is when you've got an infinity or minus infinity limit when the power is bigger on the numerator. And then it really, you do have to be careful, especially if there's like a minus here. Okay, if this were a minus, aha, then negative numbers, but then flip, that's going to be positive. And so there you do have to be careful. That's why I don't encourage necessarily memorizing this punchline, because that doesn't include the infinity case. And it doesn't let you be care let make in, uh, doesn't remind you to be careful, especially in this infinity case about signs. What I do emphasize is that the it's a perfectly good quick and dirty method to do the cover up. Okay, so why is that true? Actually, maybe I'll do that in a separate video. Um, let me see if I want to do any. Those are sort of the basic examples. Oh yeah, um, one more example though. Um, what about what if it's not a rational function? What if it's just a polynomial? What if you just take the limit as x goes to infinity of like, let's see, here's one that very much like what we had in class, x squared, uh, let's say cubed, minus 1 uh, uh, x squared, okay? If you look at this, it looks like, oh, wow, this guy's going to be more important. It's got the million in front of it. This is a tiny coefficient. So what's, let's look at what individual p each individual piece is trying to do. This guy... As x getting big, then x cubed is definitely getting really, really big, and so that's getting big. But the 0.01 is going to hold it back a little bit, and it's getting big and positive. This guy is getting big, and then with the minus in front, it's going to be negative. So there's a war here. This guy's getting positive. This guy's getting really negative. Who's going to win? Well, let's just put in an example. Suppose I put in 0.001 times, and let's put in a honking big number, 1,000 million, a billion cubed, minus one million times a billion squared. Okay, and let's just have the computer calculate that numerically. It's negative, but it's not very big. Hmm, well, that's interesting. And it's also wrong. <laughs> hmm. I don't want to trash this video, but there's something very weird about this. Um, that's just weird. There's something very weird about this guy. Let's do it by hand. We've discovered a bug in the computer program. This is going to have... Yeah, no, and it was, yeah, it was just completely wrong, actually. I don't know what happened. So this has nine zeros. This is going to have 27 zeros, and then I'm going to take off three zeros here. So this is going to be 10 to the 24th. Yeah, I thought I was doing it right, and then the computer's totally messing me up. This is going to have 9 times 2 is 18 zeros. I see. I see what's going on. It's, it really actually turns out to be exactly 0 here. Yeah. So actually, let me, um, let me go back. I really don't want to have to redo this whole video, but I did make a mistake here. Let me put in one more zero here. So this is going to be 10 zeros cubed. That'll be 30 zeros, but then I'm just dividing it by 1, 2, 3. So that's 10 to the 27th. This guy is 26 zeros, 10 to the 26th. Okay, that's positive. What happens if I put in more zeros here? Well, this guy, every zero I put in here, I'm going to get three more zeros. This guy's growing faster. Every zero I put in here, it's going to get bigger, but it's only going to get fat bigger by two zeros. Okay, and so it's going to keep going, and it's going to get, in, get more and more positive. So in fact, it's the x cubed that really matters here. It's not the coefficients, it's the x cubed. That's what happened up here with these examples. It was really all about which has the highest power. Okay, so I know that kind of screwed up with the weird, uh, the weird arithmetic that the computer was doing. 
um, it just had a hard time dealing with these cancellations. So this limit, I claim, is going to be plus infinity because it's dominated by this guy. Okay. And so the claim is, once again, we can still cover up lower order terms. And in the next video, I'll give a little justification as to why.